Let's go! LSU football fans, I know you're excited about spring football, but I'm even more excited that we now have an official roster for 2021. And I don't know about you, but I am a jersey number fanatic, like for real, in every sport, but really in football more than anything else, especially when it comes to LSU. And look, there was a lot that I liked about the jersey numbers, but there is one thing that is just bothering the living daylights out of me, okay? And I'll save that at the end because I want this to be mostly positive. So subscribe to the channel, like this video, let's get to it! So you're looking right now at the new jersey numbers and obviously the biggest news out of everything is Mason Smith will be your first ever number zero at LSU. Now, technically, there could also be an offensive player that decides to go with number zero next season as well. But Big Mason, I just always enjoyed single digit jersey numbers on defensive linemen. Uh, obviously, well, there's something about the Andre and Anthony B.J. Ojolari thing. We'll get to that in a second. But you think of like the former big guys, former defensive tackles at LSU that wore single-digit numbers, and the only name I can come up with is Ego Ferguson wore jersey number nine, which obviously will never be worn again, which we will get to in a second. And there was one jersey number switch. Coy Moore went from number five to number two, which used to be worn by, of course, uh, Eric Gilbert. But, you know, when you really think about it, number two is a big number for former LSU wide receivers, most notably Reuben Randall and, of course, Justin Jefferson. So here's the official roster from LSUsports.net. Nothing too crazy. Obviously, it is a story that there is no number seven issued yet for LSU. This is not uncommon. They normally wait before the season, as they did this past season with Jamar Chase and then Jacoby Stevens. And as you move on, you know, it's really, outside of the new guys, nothing new as far as the official roster is concerned. And obviously, you take a look at the roster, no huge surprises Obviously, a big takeaway is that Mo Hampton is not on the roster, but Micah Baskerville is still on the roster. So, as previous reports have stated, Micah Baskerville um, will not participate in spring and, of course, focus on the offseason uh, to get his grades right or whatever the case may be. But, However, uh, it is important to note that Micah Baskerville is not in the transfer portal. He is still on the roster. Um, and then you go to the bottom here, and you see all the LSU signees. And, you know, they don't have jersey numbers yet because they are obviously not at LSU yet. I do want to go down here, and whenever you look at the official LSU roster, I want you to make a mental note of this. So you look at the official football coaching staff here. Um, obviously, you know all the coaches. If you're a diehard LSU football fan, you know all these names. But what I want to show you is something we don't talk enough about. Take a look at football support staff. Now, Austin Thomas, general manager, uh, Sam Nader, Derek Panamski. These are all guys that especially these three are names that you hear quite often. But I want you to look at how many analysts there are on LSU football. I mean, just look at this. Look at how huge. And this isn't fully updated. They, in fact, hired more coaches that are assistant analysts types of role, a director of analytics. Also, her name slipped my mind right now. You're looking at screenshots of them right now. So, you know, it's it's fascinating how many people are involved with LSU football. Now, what's fascinating about the roster itself, I wanted to point this out a second ago, there is no number nine. I do believe there will never be another LSU football player that wears number nine. Obviously, because 
of the famous quarterback that wore number nine, Jordan Jefferson. Kidding, Joe Burrow. But still, it's it's fascinating. Uh, I think Auburn did that with Cam Newton. I don't think there will ever be another Auburn Tiger that wears number two. Uh, but still, that's not here nor there as far as any jersey number being retired. Or should there be another jersey number that should be retired? We'll get to that in a second. However, to me, the biggest takeaway from this updated roster is not the jersey number. It's, in fact, something quite different. So last season, B.J. Ojolari and Andre Anthony were really classified as defensive linemen, but there was a shift for them. They are now linebackers. As you see right here, B.J. Ojolari listed as a linebacker, and then all you have to do is scroll down to outside linebacker, and you'll see Andre Anthony. But that's key because, you know, if you get into the semantics of 4-3 versus 3-4, well, B.J. Ojolari and Andre Anthony were not outside linebackers. They were, in fact, defensive ends. And you go take a look at someone like Glenn Logan. Neil Farrell and Glenn Logan, however, are still listed as defensive ends when they are indeed defensive tackles. So, uh, and they were defensive ends in Dave Aranda's scheme, but they're defensive tackles in a 4-3. Obviously, that's not anything too, too, too crazy, right? You know, we know what their roles are. What's interesting, though, is a guy that we missed, uh, we mentioned yesterday was Philip Webb. Does he have an outside linebacker role? Does he have a defensive end role? Let's take a look at Philip Webb, and he is still listed as a linebacker. But to me, the biggest takeaway was actually a newcomer who hasn't even stepped foot on campus yet. That is Jack Besh, who Ed Orgeron mentioned in an interview this morning with 104.5, uh, that Jack Besh is indeed rumored to play tight end. And, you know, for Jack Besh to have this dual title, wide receiver tight end, uh, that lets you know that LSU's been thinking this for quite some time. This wasn't just something uh, that Ed Orgeron just said on the whim. A lot of what you guys have said over the past couple of weeks is that you do view Jack Besh as a potential tight end. Is, uh, you know, obviously LSU is viewing this the same way. Now, what's fascinating here is just because LSU has played um, this 2019 offense where they had Thad Moss as a tight end doesn't necessarily mean that Cole Taylor for sure is going to be on the field as much as traditional tight ends have been in the past. I could easily see LSU running more 10 personnel, which is four wide receivers on the field and one running back. And you can do that if you have a guy like Jack Besh who could potentially if he's able to develop into this, a tight end that could also block if you need him to. But, you know, you, you can just see LSU running more 10 and just having four wide receivers on the field, whether that be Kayshawn, Jare, Coy, and Deion Smith, or Trey Palmer, or John Trey. You know, we did a video on the wide receivers and a lot of the tweeners on this roster yesterday. Uh I could easily see that, and I think Jake, uh, I think Jake Peets is going to really contemplate that, because look, while Cole Taylor, uh, Ed Orgeron, really praised Cole Taylor uh, in in the interview this morning, saying that he could be an NFL tight end. So one final thing, the only jersey number issue I have, and ultimately, while I do like and try my best to memorize jersey numbers, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. However, the number 72 at LSU should be retired. And I have nothing against Garrett Dellinger. In fact, I think he'll be a starter in year two. However, <laughs> Glenn Dorsey did everything you possibly could do as a defensive player. He, in fact, won every award he possibly could have won. And he led us to a national championship. And 
you know, this has been a thing at LSU. A lot of players will leave early and never do anything in the NFL. Okay, and it was a bad decision that they would leave early. They would hurt themselves by leaving early. And, you know, I mean, that list goes on and on. Uh, Malachi Dupree, Anthony Freak Johnson, Toby Weathersby, guys that should not have left early. They should have stayed their final season. Glenn Dorsey had every reason to leave early. He was a first-round pick, a first, second, no worse than third-round pick after his junior season. He decided to come back, help Jacob Hester and that entire team win the national championship, and he won every single award. Like, he could not have done more for this LSU program. And obviously, I hope you enjoyed this video today. And don't forget, live streams Tuesday nights, Saturday nights. And, uh, of course, give me your thoughts down in the comment section below. We got football! Uh, I just burped. Kind of, sort of. Uh, it is power, our LSU boom. I think we're doing takeout tonight, baby. That low main, low main noodles. Give me some of that low main.